could he be your next president? That is uh, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Professor James Olekiyapi. That's one of the people who want to be your president. Let's get that assessed. Of course, my guest here on my uh, extreme right is our managing editor, Peter Opondo. And we have here a lawyer and author, uh, Paul Mwangi. Peter Opondo, let me just start with you. What sells for Olekiyapi right now? From what I've seen from that story, there's really nothing that sells for Professor Ole Kiyapi, apart from the fact that he's new to this uh, political game. I think he wants to fashion himself or to frame himself as the fresh person in the, in the 2012 uh, Kibaki succession uh, 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 politics. Yeah. But we don't know whether that will sell. So for me, his vision saying he wants to see a united Kenya, uh, I've, I've, I've seen in his, web his website he says he wants to a torch model kind of leadership where a leader guides the people is really nothing new. So I think he really has a lot of work to do to tell Kenyans how different is, is he, he is from the other candidates. Mm -hmm. From the other crop of leaders, of course, Mwangi, like Vito Pondo says, he is new. Could that be an advantage? Kenyans may be tired of the old cop and want a new person. It could be a gamble for him. That, uh, although in Kenya we keep saying that we want to get rid of the status quo, but when the day actually comes to do that, we hardly ever do it. If there is a resolve among Kenyans that uh, they really do want to get rid of the status mm -hmm. quo mm -hmm. and they want a clean slate, mm -hmm. then Kiyapi would be one of the biggest contenders uh, mm -hmm. for the presidency. Mm -hmm. He's a relatively young person at 50. He's very, very well educated. Uh, he has a clean past. Uh, he's been a very good PS. So there are issues, at least that are positive, if we were to have the presidency campaigned on the platform mm -hmm. of a total change. A total change and a new person. And uh, can he really do that, getting 50% plus of the whole country, uh, over 25% uh, in more than half of the counties? I, th I think Paul will tell us more about the, the provisions in the Constitution. Right. But I'm just concerned about the actual, the pragmatism of his, of his presidential campaign. Now, we are seeing a person who is fresh. Politically speaking, he's wet behind the ears. He, he's really not done it before. One of the skills that is required for a pres presidential candidate is political mobilization skills. We have nothing about Professor Lekia. We don't know anything as yet. So here is a person. It's almost a year to the election. He's still in government. First of all, if I would say that if he really wants to contest for the president, he should have been out of the government by now. Don't wait for December, because if you're living in December, you're giving yourself seven months to campaign. If you're a new person, you're new to the game, seven months is not enough time to sell yourself to the people and convince them that they actually need to vote for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing, of course, is he doesn't seem to have any... We don't know his history as he comes from Kilgoris. He's never run for uh, a seat in Kilgoris. He's not been an MP in Kilgoris. Can he really do it? Because we heard him say uh, it's not about Maasai, it's about the country, but he still needs the Maasai community. The challenge of uh, not having a political history is that, one, he has no relationship with the people. So that when he comes on the news, you don't immediately see your next president. You don't see a leader, you see a peers. And, and that lack of uh, political history, he'll have to work to change his image so that he starts looking more like a leader and mm -hmm. uh, appearing more presidential. Mm -hmm. But secondly, the lack of political history also means that he has no relationship with our power brokers. Because uh, to be able to get to the country, you have to strike deals with different communities and with different uh, counties. At the moment, he has no relationship with anybody. And uh, he will have to come out and uh, create these relationships. And I agree with what he says, that uh, he's really is out of time. He could very well be out of time in creating the relationships that he needs to get this president. Mm -hmm. And Hussein, in a related, in a related issue here, uh, they say all politics is local. I think it's the British who say that right. all politics is local. Right. That means that if you're contesting for the president, you must, presidents, you must come from, you must have a solid base from which you're rising to the presidency. Now, if you ask yourself, what is uh, Professor James Olekiapi's political constituency? If you look at all the other candidates, somehow they can be, you can say this is a constituency for uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, this is a constituency for Raila Odinga, this is a constituency for uh, William Ruto. But what is the constituency for James Olekiapi? Does he even have uh, a Twitter constituency, so to speak? Most of the candidates that are the aspiring uh, presidential candidates, you could see that they are already talking to people through social networks. They already, mm -hmm. have, they already have consolidated bases. Mm -hmm. But I don't see Professor Olekiapi's mm -hmm. constituency. So to me, he will turn out to be an also run. I don't take him as a very serious candidate. Still on that, his party, Restore and uh, Build Kenya. Can that, do people really know that party? Are we hearing it for the first time? 
well, we are hearing it for the first time, but uh, apparently it's a party that has been there, but it's little known in political terms, just li like Professor Olekiap is little known in politics. And that's really the challenge. It mm -hmm. could be a selling point. He could tell us that I am the new kid on the block, I am the fresh face. If you want to break away from the, the, the po politics of the past, elect Professor James Olekiapi as your president. But it, it could also be his weak point, because remember, the next election, I don't think will be fought on the platform of change. The reason being that most of the front runners for 2012 are also in government. So nobody will go out there and campaign on a change platform. Change from what? If Raila Odinga is going to say, uh, if you want to elect me and break away from the past, he's, he's the same past. Uru Kenyatta, the same thing. He's in government. William Ruto, he is in government, more or less. Of course, he's suspended, but he's got networks there. So if you're going to campaign on a platform for change in 2012, people will be asking you, but you've been part of the process. Mm -hmm. So what change are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So if Olekiapi campaigns on a platform of change, he's likely to sell some message, but not to so many people. We also, we also what Obama did in America. We can't say that is what will happen in Kenya, but obviously we have some politicians, especially the fresh ones, who believe they can do the same in Kenya. Can Olekiapi do the same in Kenya? Just, just before uh, Paul comes in, I, I want to comment that because right. we had discussed about that. Right. I've had uh, Professor Olekiapi being compared to an Obama in the Kenyan situation. And I think that is being unfair to Professor Olekiapi because it's raising the bar too high for him and he might get a burnout trying to be like an Obama. One, pro uh, Obama had, had political uh, work for 20 years before he became the president. He, he became a, a community mobilizer in 23 years before he became the president. And then in 2000, he contested uh, for, as a, for a Congress seat, which he, which he lost. So he had some gradual political experience, mm -hmm. even as he was going to contest for the presidency. He, had, he was in, a Senate, in the Senate for three years before he became the president. So it's not accurate to say, here is a person who has zero political experience, and he wants to become your president. And there's so much expected of him. Political, political uh, going for a president is not as easy as one might think. Mm -hmm. okay. I get the only way that uh, Kiepi can get this presidency, as you say, he has to do an Obama, uh, a guy who comes in from out there, right. although he doesn't have the political experience that Obama had, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but pull this surprise move. And for him to be able to do that, I think he needs two things, or at least one of them. He needs very, very strong oratory skills, which will deliver a very powerful message. Uh, so far, no, his oratory skills are not very impressive. His message seems to be the same message everybody is giving. It's about leadership, it's about accountability, mm -hmm. it's about integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way. The other way is that he needs to raise loads and loads of money and pour it into this campaign. And then the money can see him be able to mobilize people, be able to mobilize himself. Does and he have that? It's a strong financial base, does he have that? Uh, so far, we don't know. Maybe he might have some donor and fund or something. Or maybe, let's, let's, maybe it's unfair to us that let's compare it to the crop of leaders that we have currently, the people he'll be running against. Looking at the people he'll be running against, I think uh, financially, he will be way down, uh, down the ladder in, in terms of the amount of spending that he really mm -hmm. needs to do. Mm -hmm. And you cannot ignore money in a presidential campaign. You need to move yourself, you need to move your people, you need to mobilize your, your masses. And, and uh, they say the estimate in Kenya is uh, at least over 5 billion shillings to run a credible presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. I do not know whether he has that money or whether he'll ever be able to raise it. 50% mm -hmm. plus nationally, uh, over 25% in majority of the counties. Can Kiyapi do that? I think it, it goes back to the same question we were asking. Where is, is Ole, Professor Ole Kiyapi's constituency? Now, the constitution requires that you get 25% in at least half of the counties, yeah? And uh, 50 plus one. I think it's, it's, it, it essentially means that you have to be a very serious candidate. Like he says, you have to have resources to go out. Because I think the framers of the Constitution, what they anticipated is that a president, a person who is elected president, must have a national appeal, must be able to go out there, talk to people, and convince them. Now, the catch here is that even at the very beginning, mm -hmm. you must be nominated by 2,000 people in a mm -hmm. majority of, of the counties, which mm -hmm. means 24. Mm -hmm. So that means you must be nominated by 48,000 people. So even at the very nomination stage, you must have 48,000 people. That means even before these guys nominate you, these voters nominate you, you must have sec secretariats in all these counties working for you. Now that means a lot of resources. It, it's not for the faint-hearted. And a lot of time. 
as well? Definitely. So if only Professor Olekiapi is going to leave office in January to go and contest for mm -hmm. the pre to campaign for the presidency mm -hmm. for seven months, mm -hmm. I think he's running out of time. Actually, mm -hmm. he's time bad for now. Right. Wangi? I think one of the things, as he says, that he needs to identify is what is his constituency. Mm -hmm. Is he campaigning among the youth? Is he campaigning among communities? And, because that constituency is what is going to usher him mm -hmm. into the presidency. At mm -hmm. the moment, he seems to be talking to a united Kenya. But politically, people have various and different interests. And he can't come with a message that is just talking to all the classes of people. Mm -hmm. He must decide who is the most critical sector of this society mm -hmm. that is going to back his, uh, uh, his presidential bid. And he must craft a message to that sector okay. and start delivering it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's our managing editor, Peter Opondo, and a lawyer and author, Paul Mwangi. Your assessment, uh, their assessment, rather, of uh, your of Oleki Yapi, James Oleki Yapi, the current uh, permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, who wants to be your president. Ultimately, of course, it's up to you to decide whether Professor James Oleki Yapi will be your president. Will be doing.